there, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to the news. Live on Channel I, I'm Nita Good evening, I'm Jupiter Richards. First of all, we take a look at the headlines. The President says the main aim of the government is to eliminate the tiger Elam dream of certain persons in Sri Lanka and overseas. The zero populated zone surrounding the Koskama Salav army camp reduced to 500 meters. The Colombo Avisavila road closed for traffic has been reopened. The Defense Secretary reveals that all ammunition depots of the army are being relocated in zero populated areas. Sri Lanka's four year development plan is to be unveiled in two more weeks. Hillary Clinton clinches the Democratic nomination for the U.S. presidency. Moving on to the news in detail. Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe disclosed details of the fire that erupted at Salawa Army Camp in Koskama. He made this disclosure when he answered a question raised by MP Dinesh Gunawardena in Parliament today. MP Dinesh Gunawardena questioned as to whether the Prime Minister is going to explain on measures that will be taken after conducting an investigation into the Salawa Army Camp blast. Prime Minister Ranul Wickremesinghe said the Security Council has taken a decision to hold a preliminary inquiry into this incident and thereafter make a statement. He said that council officers of the three armed forces have been appointed and everyone should support this endeavor. A DIG was also appointed for this purpose. Similar blasts occurred in Sri Lanka earlier. In a blast reported in 2010, a foreigner succumbed to his injuries. This army camp was established in the land of Salawa Plywood Corporation during the period of war. Similar armories were set up in various places during that period. This fire erupted in a normal ammunition depot established at that time. It is essential to ascertain the reason for the fire. He said that he has questioned as to why such an ammunition depot system was continued during the period of war. He was informed that a massive sum of money was allocated to build the Defence Ministry headquarters. Therefore, it was difficult to find money for other activities of the army during the previous regime. This was described by army officers to him, the Prime Minister said. It is essential to build concrete bunkers for the purpose of using it as ammunition depots. Such an armory was built in Valisara. It is a densely populated area. Therefore, this armory should be relocated in a new place for the safety of the people. The Sri Lanka army and the police will inspect the 500-meter area from the Salava army camp to find the feasibility of allowing the people to return to their houses in the area from tomorrow. Measures will be taken to pay compensation for houses destroyed in the blast or to repair those houses with the assistance of the army. Necessary measures will be taken after examining investigation reports he said he called upon the people to help the affected persons. He lauded the people's representatives for helping the affected people, irrespective of political party differences. He said that he has seen hominal statements made by some websites by a group of persons who are trying to take political advantage. They should desist from such activities, he said. Now, all armories of the Sri Lankan Navy are to be relocated in areas with less population. Defence Secretary Karnal Senahiti Arjit told a media conference in Colombo today that the President has given instructions towards this end at a Security Council meeting. Defence Secretary Karnal Senahiti Arjit said that measures are being taken to relocate such armories in areas with less population. Civil ammunition depots have been relocated in such places so far. All necessary measures have been taken for the safety of the people as a responsible government, army and ministry. The CID is conducting an independent investigation into the incident. A separate ministerial inquiry is also underway. Necessary measures are being taken to bring normalcy to the area. People will be allowed to return to their houses located in close proximity to the Salav Army camp, which was destroyed in a fire after ensuring their maximum security. The number of people who were given shelter at public places have reduced around 600 from around 1,000. They've been provided with all facilities, including food, by the government. However, the probability of more sudden blasts in the area are high as of yet. Therefore, people should refrain from returning to their homes in haste. Emergency drills are being conducted with the aim of creating awareness on how to face dangerous situations. Further details will be provided after releasing the investigation report. The government accepts the orders given by the court and such details will be released to the people.
වගේ වෙලාවක තමයි මේ මේ කටයුත්ත වෙලා තියෙන කියන තමයි මට ආරංචි වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. ඒ පරීක්ෂණ උසාවියෙන් එන දේ තමයි රජයේ පිළිගන්නේ. ඒක තමයි අපි මහ ජනතාවට මාධ්‍යයට නිකුත් කරන්නේ. The army headquarters have informed the public to refrain from handling remnants of weaponry in surrounding areas of the camp. Military spokesman Brigadier John R. Javier appealed to the people to contact telephone numbers 0113-818-609 or 0112-434251 on details of any located shrapnel or remnants in affected areas. Military spokesman Brigadier John R. Javira said that the 500 meter limit of the Salava munition dump is still unsafe due to remaining shrapnel and remnants in the area. Some of these remnants are still active therefore children should not be allowed within proximity of these remnants. Keeping shrapnel as souvenirs should not be allowed and is illegal and highly dangerous. Such things are required for investigations. He called upon the people to hand over these items to the three armed forces or the police. People will be directed to their homes after clearing the area ensuring their maximum safety and on more news on the Salawa tragedy well all necessary facilities have been provided for the people whose houses were destroyed in the Koskama Salawa army camp fire this was revealed by divisional secretaries of Paduka and Dompe today well, around 2,500 people have been provided with temporary shelter in Sitawa, Kapaduk and Dombe Divisional Secretariat areas. Several non-governmental organizations along with the army stepped in to supply cooked food for the displays. The Water Supply and Drainage Board said that pure drinking water is being supplied to them. The security forces are continuing operations to find remnants of and also the shrapnel scattered after the explosion near the houses and buildings. Meanwhile, Minister Ranjit Simulapitiya said that the power supply will be restored tomorrow. All schools in Sitawa, Kapaduk and Dompe areas have been reopened today except six schools. Now, President Maitri Palisirisena says the main aim of the present government is to eliminate the Tiger Ilan dream of certain persons in Sri Lanka and abroad. He was speaking at the 16th commemoration ceremony of the late C.V. Gunaratna at the Devala Urban Council Hall today. Addressing the gathering, the President said that Singhala Tamil and Muslim community should live in harmony as it is the clear necessity for the future of the country. There was a need of expediting the process of strengthening national reconciliation which was neglected during the post-war period. Tamil civilians are still living in camps in the north for 27 years. He asked as to what decision that the people are going to take if they were kept in welfare camps deprived of their houses for 27 long years. If you fail to find solutions to these problems, then the youth in the north will take up arms again. We've ended the war, but the task of eliminating the LCT ideology is yet to be fulfilled. He said that he has taken measures to unite the country and to win the goodwill of the international community. Sri Lanka has been able to rebuild the friendship with all heads of states of countries in the world. The government's aim is to eliminate the ideology based on the LTT's dream for a separate Elam state. It should be eliminated both locally and internationally. He said that he has initiated this challenging task. Others cannot understand this complex situation, therefore they used to make baseless criticism and accusations against the government. Everyone should understand and the problems faced by others to build a society conducive for all people to live in harmony, coexistence and happiness. Mithik, Huhu, Boho, Bolu, Vietanian Sahacho the Nagarno. Merate, Sielu Janata out of Saturday in Sielu Janata out of Sahaji on a Samaja Gurnagan, Sielu Janata out of Samana Pata Samaja Gurnagan, Siel Lekase Saturday in Jiwakin, Api Hamakinikma, Api Prasne Wagam, Annagi Prasne, Tirungani Mavashevino. Former Minister C. V. Gunaratna died on the 7th of June 2000 in a Tiger terrorist bomb attack in Ratmalana. He was the Industrial Development Minister of the then government. A commemorative stamp was issued in memory of former Minister C. V. Gunaratna. The President presented scholarships of C. V. Gunaratna Foundation. Former President Chandrika Bandaranaike Kumar Thunga, several ministers and MPs were also present.
Two top officials of the British government called on Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe and held discussions on the progress of reconciliation and the human rights in Sri Lanka. The meeting took place in Colombo yesterday. British Permanent Under Secretary at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Simon MacDonald, and Permanent Under Secretary at the UK Department for International Development, Mark Lowcock, arrived in the island yesterday. They met Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe and discussed progress on reconciliation, anti corruption, and UK assistance for reconciliation and reforms. The British High Commission in Colombo said that the British officials also met opposition leader R. Sampanthan and discussed challenges facing the Tamil community in Sri Lanka and progress on reconciliation. Meeting with law, and order Minister Sagar Ratnayake, the visiting officials, focused attention on Sri Lanka police service reforms. Now, President Maitri Palasirisen has decided to provide an opportunity for the people to come visit the President's house in Colombo Fort and Golden Park. Accordingly, everyone, including school children, can visit these places from tomorrow to the 14th of this month. The inauguration ceremony of Visit the President's House program will be held tomorrow at 2 p.m. under the patronage of the President. The President's House and Fort, the official residence of six Presidents and 29 Governors who resided in it for their duties as well, will be open to the public for the first time in history. The President's House and the surrounding area were declared as a high security zone during former President Mahindra Rajapaksha's regime. Following the assumption of High Office of President Maitri Palasirisena, roads surrounding the President's House in Colombo Fort were opened for the people. President Maitri Palasirisena is currently not residing in the President's House and it is only used to welcome royal guests and on special occasions. Details on how to visit the President's House can be obtained by contacting the Presidential Assistant Secretary Investigations, Mr. Chaturanga, on the telephone number 077-3086-366. Sri Lanka's four-year development plan is to be unveiled in two more weeks. The new plan included the government's vision on the country's economy, infrastructure, facilities and several other fields. This was disclosed by Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayaka at a media conference in Colombo today. Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayaka noted that the country will be directed towards a prosperous future by the present government with a pragmatic monetary discipline. Finance Minister Ravi Karunayaka said that the previous regime has handed over an economy with heavy debts. We are now trying to escape from the debt trap. The government's short-term program is to strengthen the economy before simplifying the tax system. The Treasury is trying to reduce the money spent for the maintenance of Sri Lankan Airlines. A proposal was made to restructure Sri Lankan Airlines. Two or three companies will be established for this purpose as we need a national carrier. This should be done without burdening the taxpayers. Volkswagen Company will also be started in August this year, he said. Mr. Ravi Karunayak also expressed views on the no-confidence motion which will be moved against him by a certain group of opposition MPs. He added that the matter was discussed by the President, the Prime Minister and all MPs yesterday. Everyone is ready to face the action of a small group of MPs against the government, he said. Now, Foreign Minister Mangala Samaravira highlighted the potential of Sri Lanka as a paradise destination for foreign investment. He was speaking to a large delegation of French entrepreneurs in Paris. Minister Samaravira outlined the key economic targets of the Sri Lankan government and stressed on the role of French investment in the country as means of deepening the strategic partnership. He also highlighted that the participation of French companies in the implementation of development projects reflected a new degree of confidence placed on the country and noted the growing enthusiasm generated internationally for such economic partnerships. In this respect, the minister gave an overview of Sri Lanka's performance on the macroeconomic level and emphasized on the mega police planned and other new policies being devised for the accelerated economic development. Well, it's Ramzan season and the British Prime Minister David Cameron sends his greetings to all Muslims for the holy month of Ramadan in Britain and also around the world. It's the holy month of Ramadan, a time when mosques open their doors, community centres welcome in their neighbours and even churches and synagogues offer up their spaces as Muslims break their fasts and people of all faiths and none are often asked to join. Of course, fasting is what comes to mind when we think of Ramadan. It's part of the month that really puts Muslims' faith to the test, especially during these long, warm days. 
Let's continue to come together for iftars and community events. Let's celebrate the proud, multiracial, multi-faith democracy we live in. To everyone in Britain and around the world, Ramadan Mubarak. Now, Sri Lanka is ready for world acceptance and business. This observation was made by Tourism and Christian Affairs Minister John Amaratunga when he participated in the Cinnamon Travel Bloggers Conference Cinnamon TBC Asia in Colombo today. Cinnamon Hotel and Resorts, together with the National Carrier Sri Lankan Airlines, organized a second Cinnamon the Travel Bloggers Conference in Colombo. Sixty status. leading travel bloggers from around the world participated in the conference. It proved to be an invaluable Digital opportunity media, for key decision makers of Sri Lanka's hospitality and travel industry to gain key insight into the future so of their businesses. These bloggers visited Sri Lanka on a five day pre conference tour of the North Central, Central East, and Southern provinces. This initiative also created a speed networking space companies to meet and tie up with the bloggers. At the very outset, I must offer a very special word of thanks to the cinnamon hotels and resorts for taking the initiative to conceptualize this event back in 2014 and to make it a biannual event in our tourism calendar. Being in the forefront of the digital media revolution, all of you, I'm sure, are well aware of the huge potential that Sri Lanka offers as a tourism destination. One request I make of you today is to tell the world the true story. Tell them that Sri Lanka is ready to welcome the world and we are ready for business. We request you to inform the world that the world-class hotel claim chains are investing in Sri Lanka, that our luxury hotels are consistently winning global accolades. And the new airlines are coming into the country while the existing ones are increasing their frequencies to keep up with the demand for tourism in Sri Lanka. And now for a look around Asia in one minute. North Korea appears to have restarted its nuclear facility at Yongbyon, the International Atomic Energy Agency. The Yongbyon site processes spent fuel from power stations and has been the source of plutonium for North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Bangladesh slapped a ban on more than one person riding pillion on a motorcycle today, a day after the wife of a prominent security official was shot dead by three suspected Islamic militants riding a motorbike. Hong Kong authorities culled 4,500 birds at a wholesale market today, days after a potent fecal sample was tested positive for the H7N9 virus. A seven-year-old Japanese boy missing for nearly a week after being abandoned in a forest by his parents for being naughty was released from hospital today. Yamato Tanuka walked out of hospital with a big smile holding a bull-shaped object that appears to have been signed by many people according to local media. The Singapore Night Safari has added a baby elephant to its family recently and plans to present the calf to the public from late June. The baby elephant was born on the 12th of May. Now, 309 medical interns received appointments as medical health officers today at a ceremony held under the patronage of Health Minister Rajita Sena Ratna. Minister Rajita Senaratna disclosed that 842 centers for medical tests for the people and 942 such centers for women will be opened in the near future. He noted that the ministry will work with the Government Medical Officers Association and other trade unions in mutual understanding. We are going to have build the quarters for you all every, uh, in all hospitals. Not only for you all, from the doctors up to the minor staff, everybody will be provided their quarters. Then very soon we will introduce the, the duty-free car permit for you all. If we provide the house, the permit and a good salary for you. We have given, we have given a salary increase last year with the intervention of the DMOI. Uh, so I also back that uh, uh, the increase, 10,000 rupees more for you all. So we will give you more remuneration because we agree that whatever you are paid is not enough. 
but there are certain things that we can afford. That's the whole problem. But I think in about two years' time, with the development we are going ahead, we will be able to give all the public servants, especially the doctors, a very good future. A general amnesty has been declared for deserter soldiers of the three armed forces from the 13th of June to the 12th of July. Well, these deserters have been requested to visit the nearest army camp during the amnesty period and obtain legal resignation of service. Additional Secretary of the Defence Ministry, Siripal Hetyar, said that there were around 30,000 to 35,000 deserters of the three armed forces. Those who failed to make use of the amnesty will be taken into custody by the police. Med General Nandan Udwata noted that all of their certificates were with the Army, Navy or the Air Force. They had to face problems in finding new jobs. This was the best opportunity to settle these issues, he said. Rear Admiral Sisir Jakudi said that no punishment will be meted out to deserters during the general amnesty, amnesty period. They will be given an opportunity to find their livelihoods. <coughs> Air Vice Marshal Chandana Valikala said that the According to the normal procedure, deserters will have to be taken into custody and taken disciplinary action. But under the general amnesty, no disciplinary action will be taken against them. They will be allowed to leave the Air Force without any apprehension or punishment. Now, Sri Lanka stands ready to combat illegal trafficking of wildlife, which has emerged to become one of the largest transnational organized criminal activities alongside drugs, arms and human trafficking. A top diplomate, the United Nations stated. Delivering a statement at a special high-level event at the United Nations headquarters in New York, Ambassador and Charge Affairs of the Permanent Mission to Sri Lanka to the UN, Sabarullah Khan, said that while the world marked another World Environment Day on the 5th of June, wildlife and forest, flora and fauna are at the moment being ravaged due to transnational organized crime, impacting vulnerable communities and the fragile environment. The convener of the Web Media Journalists Association, Freddie Gamage, has urged the law enforcement authorities to apprehend persons who have planned the thug attack against him. He said that, that there were sufficient evidence for this purpose. It has been reported that Freddie Gamage was attacked by a group of thugs when he was leaving from uh, the Negambo Urban Council after the council meeting. He visited the Negambo Urban Council re to report the proceedings of the council meeting. Two suspects were taken into custody and later remanded. Freddie Gamage underwent a CT scan on medical advice. The government aims to gain sustainable economic growth for a better tomorrow for all Sri Lankans. This was stated by Finance Minister Ravi Karnanayaka when he delivered the founder's duration of the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka in Colombo recently. Minister Ravi Karnanayaka is a fellow member of the CMA and is a patron of the Institute. The Institute was launched in June 2000 with the technical support of the CMA Canada and the financial sponsorship of the, the CMA. The far-reaching changes which came into existence with the revolutionary Maitri Palasiri Center Ranil Vikram Singh Axis provided the framework for a national unity government. All communities had contributed to the creation of a national government within a united and unitary Sri Lanka. Through this unity, we have managed to resurrect a depreciating democracy to a standard which widely applauded and commended worldwide. National government towards the national economy is not only a phrase which rhymes perfectly, but also interwoven with future prosperity of Sri Lanka and sustainable growth resulting in a better tomorrow for all Sri Lankans. Qatar Airways and Sri Lankan Airlines, both members of One World Alliance, have strengthened their cooperation with a bilateral co-share relationship. This was revealed by Qatar's national carrier in a media release. Both airlines co-share each other's flights between their respective hubs. Qatar Airways' thrice daily Airbus A340-600 operations to Colombo and Sri Lankan Airlines' daily Airbus A330-300 flight to Doha. The combination of four, four flights between Doha and Colombo will 
offer customers additional convenience and flexibility. Passengers traveling to Colombo on Qatar Airways now have the additional connectivity to the popular holiday hotspot Mali in the Maldives. Sri Lankan airline passengers can also transit through Doha's Hamad International Airport and travel onwards subject to government approvals to 20 exciting leisure and business destinations. Gandhara's sacred relics will be brought to Hunga Mahatagala Raj Mahavihara tomorrow. Hundreds of thousands of devotees visited the Maha month in the Pirivena in Mathura to worship the sacred relics at the exposition today. Sacred relics were brought to the Maha month in the Pirivena in Mathura yesterday morning from Vidyaloka Maha Pirivena in Go. The sacred relic exposition is organized on the directions of the chief priest of the temple, the Venerable Gatamani Dhammakiti Thera. School children were among the large number of devotees who visited the temple to worship the sacred relics. In foreign news, we have moved right to the U.S. Hillary Clinton has clinched the Democratic nomination for U.S. President after reaching the required number of delegates. The count puts Clinton on 2,383. That's the number needed to make her the presumptive nominee. Hillary Clinton became the first female nominee for a major U.S. political party, but rival Bernie Sanders said Clinton had not won, but she has, in fact, was dependent on superdelegates who could not vote until the July party convention. Clinton reached the threshold with a big win in Puerto Rico and a burst of last-minute support from superdelegates. Superdelegates are the party insiders who can pledge their support for a candidate ahead of the convention but do not formally vote for them until the convention itself. AP's announcement came ahead of Democratic primaries on Tuesday in California, Montana, New Mexico, North Dakota and South Dakota and New Jersey. The last ones to close will be in California tomorrow. And of some international news in brief. A car bomb attack targeting a police bus has killed at least 11 people in central Istanbul, officials say. The explosives are remotely detonated as a vehicle passed through the busy Vesensele district at the morning Russia. No group has said it carried out the attack. Violence in Turkey has escalated recently as a result of tensions with Kurdish separatists and the conflict in neighboring Syria. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi interacted with the heads of American think tanks as he began his three-day visit to the U.S. yesterday. Those in attendance were the heads of Brookings Institution, the Atlantic Council and the Carnegie Endowment for the Institute Center for National Interest, Global Energy Capital, the Asia Group and the Foundation of Defense of Democracies. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu flew to Moscow yesterday for talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin and Netanyahu are expected to meet today. Likely on the agenda is fighting in Syria. Netanyahu visited Moscow in April to discuss closer military coordination. Welcome back and it's sports. Sri Lanka team selections for the 2016 Asia Cup netball tournament began at Katunak Air Force Indoor Stadium today. The tournament is to be held in Bangkok, Thailand. 20 best netball players of Sri Lanka are participating in the selections for the final squad who will play the 10th Asian Netball Championship. A 12-member squad will be announced after the selection test tomorrow. Chairperson of the Sri Lanka Netball Federation, Yasser Ram Chandu, said that uh, three reserves will also be selected. Sri Lanka netball team selection will be made by the members of the selection committee headed by Chandrani Pathiraja. The Asian Netball Tournament will be held from the 30th of July to the 7th of August. Now, anyway, with update this evening, the Mets Department says that several spells of chance will occur in the western, northwestern, central Sabaragamo and southern provinces. Light showers are likely in the Mala and Jaffna districts. Showers of thunder showers are likely at a few places in the Uber and eastern provinces, particularly after 2 p.m. Fairly strong winds at times can be expected over the country, particularly over the western slopes of the central hills.
that's what tomorrow looks like. Anyway, we wish you a bright day tomorrow. Do enjoy the rest of the programs. Take care and good night.